Uh, Mr. President, honorable leaders of Danbury and members of the City Council, City officials, department directors, employees, and my fellow Danburyans. In accordance with my duties as mayor and those prescribed by the Charter of the City of Danbury, and those required by the Connecticut General Statutes, I respectfully submit my proposed budget and the comprehensive capital improvement plan for the fiscal year 2010-2011. Before I begin my budget details, let me say thank you to the legislative body of our city, the City Council, because we all know it's just one meeting a month. And of course, it's <laughs> an inside joke for those folks that are here. And of course, to our leadership, our City Council spends hours and hours working on the city's business in a voluntary capacity. And in the coming month, they will be giving up their evenings and their weekends to deliberate over this body of work. For their dedication and their commitment, we should all indeed be thankful. Special thanks go to our budget team. Of course, our superstar, Judy Barris, is hiding in the back. She types everything in and makes 52 changes. <laughs> Dan Garrick, who hands and handles a lot of the calculations along with his team. And of course, our director of finance, David St. Hilaire. So for all of their hard work, we thank them and we honor them. You know, for the last three years, we've received national awards for the budget presentation. There's a lot of work that goes into that packet that's assembled to you, and we certainly appreciate the work that they do. I also want to recognize and thank our city treasurer, Dan Jowdy, who's here as well. We appreciate the work and commitment that he has to the city of Danbury. Ladies and gentlemen, the last two years have been the most challenging that the city of Danbury has ever faced in terms of municipal budgeting. The economic meltdown, the Great Recession has dragged on. It has had a profound impact on our revenues and the city's overall economic health. Last year, our finance department ran a small surplus, and we finished the year without a drawdown on fund balance. Last year, our bond rating was enhanced and increased, and just last month, our bond rating was affirmed. This year, we're cutting costs at every corner to adhere to our adopted budget. This year, we have deferred filling 46.5 positions, saving the taxpayers of this city $2 million in the current budget. And many of these positions will remain unfunded in the proposed 2010-2011 budget. This comes directly on the heels of the elimination of 14 full-time employees the 2009-2010 budget. Over the last 18 months, we've eliminated more than 60 positions across our 22 departments. All hiring has been deferred unless there's a critical need or there's an additional overtime burden to our city. Our tax collector has implemented an aggressive program for collections, including a booking <coughs> program that has netted us hundreds of thousands of dollars and uncollected motor vehicle taxes. I have realigned the level of benefit for our incoming non-union personnel. We now require enrollment in the HSA program for medical care and for the first time ever a copay on retiree medical plans. We will also require a payroll deduction for our pension plan. We recently refunded our high interest bonds and reissued lower cost bonds that will save approximately $1.8 million in debt service. And as we speak tonight, we are currently in the process of evaluating various city assets to sell or lease to generate additional revenue for our city. The initial department request from all general fund departments totaled $215 million, which is an increase of $13.4 million the 09010 adopted budget. The Board of Education requested $116.4 million, and city departments requested $99.4 million. Clearly, many of our departments are feeling the budgetary pressures of two years of zero increases. Nevertheless, I maintain that this is a time to remain vigilant in our fiscal restraint. And this is a time to think outside the box for extraordinary solutions during these extraordinary times without adding any more burden than absolutely necessary to our taxpayers. Regrettably, for the first time in three years, the operating and capital budgets 
while reflecting spending reductions, 46 unfilled positions, and restraints and cuts in every line item, must grow. The FY 2010-2011 budget will show an increase of 3.6%. So what drives the decision-making process regarding spending? We have five core services to provide to our taxpayers. First and foremost, we got to cash to criminals. Second, if your house catches on fire, we've got to be able to put the fire out. Thirdly, we've got to educate our children. It's our duty and it's our responsibility. Fourth, we have to provide a hand up instead of a handout to those less fortunate than us. And fifth, we have to encourage economic development and job creation. Once again, I've asked our department heads to develop measurable goals and objectives to reflect these priorities. Those goals and priorities will provide transparency, accountability, and efficiency that are clearly delineated in the budget that I presented to you tonight. Of the $5.3 million that, that are an increase in spending on the city side of the budget, you'll find them almost exclusively in these areas. We have increased pension costs due to the downward trend of the stock market. That accounts for $2.6 million. We have increases to our insurance. That accounts for a million dollars. We have an increase in fuel and utilities. That's $500,000. We have our capital expenditures, which is $1 million, and our professional services, which is $200,000. Of course, the biggest driver in our spending plan continues to be education and its related costs. Over the last eight years, Educational spending in this administration has increased by $32.2 million, or almost 40%. The taxpayers of the city of Danville have been proud to invest in the educational experience of our children. And this council, the people sitting down here in front of us tonight, have stepped to the plate time and time again to support our schools with increases to their bottom line. Tonight I'm recommending a $2 million increase in operational funds to the Board of Ed. This will raise their total appropriation to $114 million. I know that's not what the Board has asked for, but that's what we can afford. And I'm recommending this appropriation with the full knowledge of the Council's frustration over education spending. Ladies and gentlemen, I get it. I hear you. My recommended increases will only cover energy costs, insurance costs, and infrastructure support to our school system. The taxpayers of Danbury cannot afford to continue to fund large increases to the education budget each year. They have, in short, hit the wall. But let us not forget that operational funds are not the only expenditure that the city makes in regards to education. Last year, we replaced the roof at Park Avenue School. This year in our capital plan, I'm recommending replacing the roof at Stadley Ruff School. The cost of that roof is $1.7 million. I'm also recommending the replacement of seven boilers in four separate schools. Through a lease purchase arrangement, organized and spearheaded by Rick Colanzo and Antonio Agarola, we will replace the boilers at Danbury High School, Broadview Middle School, Stadley Rough School, as well as King Street School. Some of those boilers have not been replaced for 40 years. And this investment, coupled with the roof, totals more than $5 million. Part of our duty and responsibility as elected officials is to protect our residents. Once again, Danbury is blessed to have the lowest crime rate in the state of Connecticut and one of the lowest crime rates in the nation. We must continue to provide the tools necessary for our public safety departments to continue to provide a safe and secure community for our residents. Some of these tools include the rollover of new patrol cars for the police department and the lease agreements for the two pumpers for the fire department that has previously been approved by the city council. This year, I am once again recommending that we continue to invest in our community with our strategic partnership established the United Way. In the 2010, 2009 2010 budget, the United Way helped distribute funding to 23 city agencies that in turn assisted 14,474 residents. 
our investment strategy covered the targeted areas of the economy, health, and education. These agencies have provided a key role in giving our residents a hand up instead of a handout. They are also providing a key role in helping to us to address the reason a person becomes homeless. The homeless are the most challenged during the current economic crisis. They live on the margins. and They have been deeply affected by job loss and by the mortgage crisis. Our focus in our 10-year plan to end homelessness has been to address the causes that create homelessness. Part of the measure of our community and of us is how well we care for those who are struggling in the face of the current economic crisis. Many of you, many of you council members, attended our Project Homeless Connect program designed to connect our homeless population with much needed services from our nonprofit community. And this past year, many of you attended the opening of Vet House One, a traditional home for our homeless veterans. Mark Bellin has already addressed our next project, which is Vet House Two, another transitional home for our homeless veterans. By leveraging our limited resources, with a funding distribution plan that provides accountability, transparency, and clarity, we can maximize every single dollar in this community that goes to our care providers. Ladies and gentlemen, our 2010-2011 budget recognizes that our taxpayers have a limited ability to pay. And because of that, we have a responsibility to do everything we can to minimize the effects of the 2007 reevaluation. And even though we believe that this is just another unfunded mandate from the state. The city of Danbury has, by state law, the requirement to implement the phase in of the reevaluation of October 1, 2007. Last year, if you remember, we opted to delay the next step in the phase in an effort to minimize the impact on our residents. This year, I'm recommending the implementation of the next step of the phase in. And in order to mitigate the impact of the phase in, the adoption of an across-the-board tax freeze for our qualifying seniors. I'm also recommending that we take a two-year approach to our budget. And for that reason, implementing the next step of the phase in this year will allow us to freeze the phase in again next year. Current studies have shown that the greater Danbury area has seen an 8 to 10% drop in home values since 2008. My recommendation will ensure that the homeowners of this city are not paying an overinflated value of their home and that they will not be paying on their full fair market value determined in that reevaluation. By implementing the next step in the phase in this year, by freezing the phase in next year, our taxpayers will avoid paying on the full assessment that was calculated to height of the real estate loan. As you, what, as, you, as you will see in the capital budget, I'm recommending an appropriation for the next state mandated reevaluation, which will begin later this year. Our new reevaluation will take effect on October 1, 2012, and will be used in preparation for the 2012-2013 fiscal year. For those reasons, I'm recommending a reduction in our mill rate to 21.41, down 0.25 from our previous mill rate of 21.66. Ladies and gentlemen, our spending plan is realistic. It contemplates reduction in state aid, and the reduction in permit fees, and other tax revenues. And it contemplates the impact, the negative impact that they've had on our budget. But let's make no mistake, there's pain in this budget. With cuts in every department and 46.5 vacancies, our department heads will be challenged, and they will be required to deliver the same level of service but they're going to have to do it with fewer staff. The Board of Education will retire, be required to return to the table for further discussions on developing cost efficiencies in our school. Ultimately, to achieve a zero net increase on our taxpayers and implement the state mandated reevaluation would be next to impossible. The amount of increase or decrease to the individual taxpayer will vary depending upon their individual assessment. But let us not forget, the primary purpose of government is to protect the public health, the safety, and the welfare of our residents. The 2010-2011 spending plan does just that. It implements an across-the-board tax freeze for qualifying seniors, never done in this city before. It funds our schools at levels we can afford, not what we necessarily want. 
And by utilizing 46 vacancies, we've downsized and saved almost $2 million. And this spending plan does not require any additional layoffs. Our 2010-2011 budget protects our strong credit rating and our enhanced bond rating by limiting the drawdown on fund balance. It implements a difficult reevaluation by minimizing its impact on our taxpayers. By utilizing the phase in, it sets the stage for a successful 2011 2012 budget cycle. Finally, when we have completed our work in May, you can rest assured that Danbury will still have one of the lowest effective property tax rates in the state and the lowest soaring water rates of any city in Connecticut. Because in Danbury, we do more with less every single day. And in Danbury, we've already made the difficult decisions that communities across the state are just beginning to grapple with. This community, our community, your community, has weathered the current economic storm better than any city in Connecticut. As our country begins to heal from the worst economy since the Great Depression, our city is poised to continue to be the shining star of the state. So tonight, I want to thank the council for their dedication. I stand ready to work with all members, all members, as we deliberate over this body of work. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no Republican idea or Democratic idea. It's just a good idea. And we'll work together to implement that. So Mr. President, with these thoughts in mind, I respectfully submit to you this budget for the city's fiscal year 2010-2011. Thank you for your attention this evening. God bless you. God bless America. And God bless our great city. Thank you.